guys and gals welcome back for this week's episode of the insider gaming news talk show i know we haven't been back for a little bit i'm sorry about that ahead of time but we're back we're back here on twitch we're hanging out doing a thing with everybody i'm joined today by kid tutu mind one and super midas welcome everybody What's good up? afternoon yeah we have uh we've got some news since we've been around or haven't been around a little bit we've had twitch cons that's happened last weekend we've had some company buyouts we've had God, just like a little bit of everything, I feel like this week. Or this, yeah, basically this last two weeks, essentially. It's been crazy. Um, you guys ready for this? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, let me. Oh, this is not. Let me post. I was like trying to schedule something. So, yeah. Uh, let's start with uh, what are our topics are for today. We're going on some of the Twitch news and industry stuff that's come from TwitchCon and some of the stuff around it. Uh, we've got new game release uh, updates and surprises from some of the big popular game studios out there, which has actually been pretty, pretty interesting this year. Microtransactions are making a comeback, and not in a positive way. not mm -hmm. At least not that I think. Yeah. And then, of course, just miscellaneous game industry news, and then, of course, our weekly deals and cool stuff from Tutu. Uh, but first off, let's get started with uh, what have we been playing this week, guys? Let's what what have you all been going for it? Uh, mind one, go for it. Uh, well, since it's October, we switched to playing some uh, scary games, and everybody wanted to see Amnesia, so I've been uh, wearing lots of pairs of brown pants and uh, just <laughs> jumping and screaming. It's ridiculous. I hate it. I hate it with everything. But wait, we're having a good time. Wait, wait, and, wait uh, with uh, with Amnesia, are you, are you actually getting scared for that one? Um, you know what? It's mostly so I, I set up alerts and stuff so that people can, you know, there are levels of scare that they can do. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably been pretty even. The game has scared me, and then the people have scared me. So oh, um, it's kidding. been it's been really fun. Um, and then today we tried some Destiny two, and uh, the uh, it the game is yeah. That's like <laughs> I don't. <laughs> the game is yeah. <laughs> Oh man, Tutu, what have you been playing? Uh, I think it, like we all said, Destiny Two, right? So that's oh, yeah. that's just been on my mind so much this week. Uh, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving every aspect of it, from uh, the the Shadow Keep DLC to even the free to play stuff. Um, it's it's so so dope now, and I love like where it's at, and like just to see the progression from like where it started with Activision and now post Activision where it's at. It's it's amazing. Um, and oddball, I've been playing a lot of uh, Minecraft uh, lately. Getting back into it, um, especially on mixers. It's it's uh, been a blast playing it and streaming it on mixer. So, oh yeah, that's been one of the other ones that's kind of cropped back up uh, a bit recently too. It seems like with uh, different different people, like Minecraft has just been its thing. Yeah, and it's really cool because like uh, I I honestly haven't played in years, and they've done uh, even the vanilla experience. They've done so many updates uh lately and just made the kind of that vanilla experience like a lot better now that's awesome yeah i i um 
you know, I can just bounce right off that. I've been playing Minecraft 2 this week. Um, you know, I switched back over to modded um, because I, I very much enjoy modded more than anything else. Um, but yeah, I've been playing Minecraft. And then um, yesterday I cracked out Arma 3 for the first time in some like in like, probably about three months. Um, back. Yeah, and, you, you know, you know, I had a really good time Um, that I I dropped I dropped into a Zeus her server and flew a helicopter around for about like three or four hours. Um, and it was really enjoyable. Um, but I've tr been trying this new thing. Um, and it's it's kind of kind of an acquired taste kind of game, but it's still a lot of fun. It's a game called Prosperous Universe. Um, and it's it's sort of like the planetary interaction game, um, game quote unquote, in uh, Eve, where you manage you know the production and the facility on a planet. But you also have the added list of like marketing and, um, you know, how, how you're going to trade your your productions. Um, so I've been enjoying that. Um, I've set up a nice little base and I've set up a corporation. I'm, I'll drop the link in chat. Um, but that's what I've been playing. Nice. Oh, <laughs> no links in chat. Cool. Oh, <laughs> oh, you know what? Here, I got him. I got him. <laughs> cool. Awesome. No links rip. There we go. Uh, Thank you. I've been on that uh, on a couple game kick this week. It seems like I've been on uh, Destiny Two since it came back free to play, and then I also got into the new DLC, and then also Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And I was super, super, super ready to play Paranoia because it was coming out. It's like an old RPG, like game you play, kind of like D and D, you know, paper RPG. And uh, they made a video game version of it, like top down, kind of like Diablo or Baldur's Gate style with a little bit of XCOM feel to it. And I was like, oh, my God, like friend computer. It's basically you're a bunch of clones and this really nasty, like Skynet style AI is making you do stuff to keep the colony running. And if you don't do it right, it kills you <laughs> <laughs> or like you misbehave too much and he kills you and other stuff. And then, of course, he's throwing you into danger and all this other stuff all the time. And it's it's the most hilarious RPG I think you'll ever play, but it got delayed. I was super looking forward to it because it's come, supposed to come out Tuesday, but Monday night, super late. Uh, they they announced it was coming November fourteenth instead of this week. So I was like, damn, I wanted to play it, but I'm like I'm like it's okay. If they're making it better, I'm good. <laughs> but uh, Destiny two and and Ghost Recon are definitely points points of topic for today. That's for sure because we've got uh, some interesting news with them to share and whatnot. So that's gonna be. Its own things. So let's get on with the uh, the topics for today. Uh, TwitchCon Twitch news. Man, oh man, I was at TwitchCon last weekend, which is actually I'm kind of coming down from the con plague <laughs> that I got, so it's I'm not doing as bad as I was earlier this week, but got some interesting stuff. Uh, one of the weird ones, which I thought was interesting, is real reason why I put it on here is Mac Makeup has decided to break into the content creator space, which is something I guess you know. There's a lot of like. Um, like the body paint artists and makeup artists and stuff like that have been really striving for some kind of makeup company to kind of like go into the Twitch space and support them because nobody could get like sponsorships or anything because of it. And uh, yeah, that's become like the new the new thing recently with with that. And I'm pretty interested in seeing how they they handle that going forward with, you know, Mac. I mean, it's a it's a makeup titan as far as I know. And it's pretty crazy. I'm I'm excited, you know, for those makeup artists out there that are doing that stuff. Uh, the partner party. This one, actually, I was trying to see if I could f find a way to show it on camera, but we had to set up another streaming program on short notice. But uh, so the partner party was great this year. Aside of the two main things, actually, no, I, I take it back. In terms of every, every other party that had happened at, over the course of the weekend, the Twitch partner party was probably the, my least favorite, like hands down, which is weird because last year it was the best party, the best. Like you couldn't get any better than that. Uh, so this year they had open containers. They were serving beer on a table, like tables. Oh, oh, sheesh. And they were serving them on open tables for everybody just to pick up and do whatever with. And they were only half sound. monitored. Okay. <laughs> they were half monitored. Out of that, one person got drugged that we know of. The, uh, we don't know of anybody else because nobody had come forward in the meantime. But yeah, they had to go get their stomach pumped and all that fun stuff that night, which Yikes. was crazy. Um, yeah. And I, in fact, even when I went up, I got there a little bit later. I got about halfway through the party. I showed up and I asked for a fresh beer. I don't like taking beer from a table. Like, it's just not my thing. Like, unless my friend's like, oh, you know, you walk up and your friend's got a beer ready waiting for you. That's fine. Cause you know, that person's at least watched it. Not going to an open table with like 
40 beers and you have no idea if somebody's put anything in it. <laughs> like, for one, that's not cool. In any way, shape, or form. And this is Twitch. I'm really surprised that it happened. It was like a street yeah. scene style party. It was literally like they just blocked off like a section of an intersection or a block and just did it all there. And then the second thing is like when you go to the partner party 90% of the time, you always want to go and just kind of meet your friends and hang out and see what's going on and, you know, kind of catch up with people because this is the first party of the weekend. And they always go, and the one thing that Twitch it always does wrong with this partner party is it's always ridiculously loud. Like, it is always so loud. Like, they put a DJ right smack center, and everybody, literally, if you looked walked into the venue, the only places people were walk, or talking was by the bar, which was the furthest away from the uh, music, and also off to the sides. Nobody was dancing. Nobody was doing anything. Everybody wanted to chat and catch up with their friends and basically got stuck with, you know, a super loud party again, which they've, everybody's been requesting for years to stop doing that. So that was one thing. Uh, another thing going on to like the con floor itself, like, I don't know. Did you guys get to see much of the con floor, like in pictures and whatnot? Mm. Uh, I only saw a couple of tweets about it. Um, I sort of managed to avoid it for a little while. Um, but, you know, I, I saw some photos of it. The only photos that I saw outside of the, the con was the table of beers. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, the table of beers was, was kind of a disaster like, nah. right there. Yeah, and, and Munition took that picture and that was spread like wildfire. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, of course, you know, Keemstar decided to jump on it. Uh, well, he jumped on it at first saying it was not going to be an issue and then somebody actually got drugged and he backtracked on it. <laughs> but Keemstar yeah, is not. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about Keemstar because we all know he's garbage. <laughs> yeah. We're um, really talk about him. Uh, so another one th weird thing. So security was improved, like 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 it was last year. They actually improved it in a way that it didn't make these crazy lines that happened in San Jose. San Jose, like the first day, nobody could get in on Friday because the lines for security were so long and so terrible that it was just bad. You know, everybody wanted the improved security, which was great. It was a good thing that Twitch is really trying to. Do, a, do stuff towards that but at the same time it slowed it down too bad last year a lot of people missed out on friday so they ended up getting free passes for saturday because of it this year they they dramatically improved that because san diego uh, convention center is set up in a way that they can take out multiple sections of the con floor they're still not using 100 percent of the convention center they're only still using like about 50 percent. so it's great because they could expand and grow and do better things in the future uh so my problem was is when you did security which was great um, you had to walk, so if you're looking at the convention center in the front, you had to walk to the far left end to go to the center, then you had to enter, or you had to walk to the far left end to enter, go into the security in the center, and then you had to walk all the way to the other end just to get into the con floor, which was the most annoying thing in the world. Like, you're already walking a lot, and you're making us walk, I mean, if you don't know what, how long San Diego Convention Center is, it's about 10 blocks long. <laughs> it's yeah, fucking long. it's huge. It's, ri it's ridiculously big. Yeah, like every section, every A, you know, A to, it's like A through F, and every letter is about a block, like going through it. Um, So it's pretty long. It's It takes up like a whole, that whole section. So you had to walk from one end to the other. That was my only real big complaint. And then when you did get to that other end, you passed like seven sets of doors that entered into the con floor where the convention was actually happening, but they forced you into one because of presentation. They wanted you to walk in and have the, see the big mm. Twitch sign and get the whole experience. Which I'm like, cool, but you guys, you guys, you know, you're in San Diego Convention Center. There's there's hundreds of doors to get in and out of the convention center. I mean, they host a Comic Con every year, which is, you know, that makes this this con look like an, a tiny little anthill on the side in this in the desert. It is an anthill. <laughs> so I'm just like, come on, guys, like, got to learn from this. That's like one of my biggest complaints. So, but yeah, so aside of that, the con floor itself was great. Like I had a lot of space. The thing is, is I felt they sold out of tickets, but when you went to the con floor, you had no real, like you, you weren't pushing through people, which was great. But at the same time, the whole con always felt empty because there was mm. just so much space. There was to the point where they spaced out everything so much that every vendor had more than enough space to do anything they wanted. And then there was almost too much walking space. And it's like, you know, at that point, you're like, you want to see more people coming into the convention because it's, you know, you want you see your friends, you want to see uh, other streamers, you want to see the people that you look up to or, you know, you hang out with or whatever. But I feel like they limited it that a lot because of how little of tickets they sold, apparently. I mean, if, if somebody told me it was something around 35,000, but I don't even think it was that. Like, you couldn't, you probably would only see maybe about, I want to say 3,500 to 4,000 people at the convention at any given time. I mean, and there's multiple levels too. You had the top floor where it had 
the loot cave and artist alley and then on the main con floor was the expo hall but you never saw as that many people on the expo hall the artist alley and the loot cave was always busy because it's loot cave is always busy in general but um it's definitely something to keep an eye <clears throat> how they improve that next year and on top of that there's also rumors that they're bringing twitchcon back to san diego for not just next year but for possibly the next three years so you'll see it for 2020 yeah. 21 21 21 and 1 2022 so that'll be an interesting thing to see if they actually did sign a multi-year deal because like we'll find out basically and then you know twitchcon next year if they're going to announce it again hey it's going to be in san diego again <laughs> you know surprise so that, I that guess a, san diego's working really well for them for them to do that it's the favorite it's like out of all the places they've had twitchcon san diego's always been the favorite because it has everything in downtown like long beach was terrible because there's no hotels or bars nearby, so everybody had to travel to go and do that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, San Jose had bars and everything around it, but the convention center was too small and you couldn't put anything in it. So, like, the convention space that they had for San Jose compared to San Diego was literally almost half, or a little under half. Like, that's how small San Jose Convention Center was. Uh, but it had bars and hotels and everything, so that worked out all right. Uh, but they still had to make people Uber everywhere to go other places, which kind of sucked. Um, and then they have San Francisco. Well, obviously it's just too overcrowded. Like they don't have a whole lot of hotel space or anything in San Francisco, really, unless you're going outside and it just takes everybody too long to get to appointments and other, otherwise, but then you get to San Diego, there's like 50 hotels in San Diego alone. Not to mention you've got gas lamp quarter with like a hundred bars on it. So you could yeah. do whatever you want in terms of parties and all the hotels also have all kinds of space to do like extra parties or anything like that. Like I saw the crucible group, uh, or crucible, the game that they're doing, uh, I saw them at TwitchCon also, but they were at the Marriott next door and things like that. And it was great. Like, you know, you get to see other places where people can go if they're not going to pay for con floor space, basically. So it worked out in that regard. But uh, so now San Diego is beautiful. I mean, it's it's yeah. a great place to just go anyways. And and a lot of people, like, since it came back to San Diego, people came a couple days early and left a couple days later just to go to the zoo and do other stuff yeah, here yeah. in town. Like, it's great. There's everything here. As you do in San Diego. Right? Yeah, for sure. Now I want to pass this off to one of you guys. Have you have you guys seen the new Twitch advertising campaign? Oh, oh somebody! I, I would you love guys talk to talk about this. About this. I would love oh. to talk about this. I'm a big fan of Eric Andre. Um, Eric Andre pretty much got me through high school um, somehow, and this whole new Twitch advertising campaign is just so. It's so bizarre. It feels. <laughs> It feels forced, to be honest with you. Um, the uh, the way that Eric Andre works is um, a lot of Eric Andre is they bring people on the show and they don't tell them what's going on. They Eric Andre is just like, I'm going to throw up on my desk now. And that's the joke is, is they don't know what's going on. But with this, it just felt super forced and like ah oh, look we have we we signed eric andre for a marketing deal well, look ooh, but like you know what am i supposed to do care when you've written a script for him instead of letting him do what he does best yeah um so it's weird and it, it feels it kind of I'll, I'll be honest with you it makes me uncomfortable um i i i can't watch those ads anymore i skip them yeah i well, mean i don't understand what they're advertising i've seen a few of them or a couple of them and it's like what exactly are you advertising i don't get it like, right i have no idea you know i'm talking about the ads but i don't know what they're advertising at there, all. there's only like out of the on the andre one the only part of that advertisement that actually talks about what the advertisement's about is saying here are the cool things on twitch basically but the whole rest of it is like what the hell what is like, happening are you on yeah. drugs yeah. <laughs> i was watching it again. Yeah. it's so like it's so just it's all over the place and like for no reason like it's just like, well why? and the i think part of the problem too is like the message they're presenting to the people that don't know what twitch is yet because twitch is still if you really think about it is still fairly new yeah. you know you do the the supermarket test where you go into a supermarket and ask people if you, they know what twitch is most people say no the message that they're putting out there is not a good one for Twitch right now because it's like, what are you even doing? Like, what does right. it mean? Yeah, there's like no focus to it. And, and the, the bad press from the, the partner party too is all, I mean, and that, you know, that's an exclusive group thing, but that's also like, you should be treating, you know, your partners especially great. But, but when you have like that bad press that, you know, it's still kind of fresh in people's mind because it happened just last week. And then you go to this thing that looks like, 
like a bunch of people got drugged basically in the commercial <laughs> <laughs> and threw <all> <laughs> shit around it. Like, what the hell, guys? Well, and, and they don't really have like, I mean, I know that there's been some controversy, a lot of controversy as of late on Twitch. They don't really have all their ducks in a row to be putting their best foot forward right now in advertising to general public, I don't think, yeah. with no. all the stuff that's happened. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't think it's a good time. I mean, you know, they pulled out the Eric Andre card and like, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to move back to Twitch because of the perks that they're now offering. But like, it's just such a weird thing to do. It's such a bizarre way to do that. I don't know why they decided to do that. I think if they would have pushed the message, like if you want to be a creator, or if you're a creative person or something, which is where you should be. Or if you want to find creative things or something like that, that's, that's what the message so of the commercial better. should be. But you think yeah. hire you mine one. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'll, no, just, I'll like... just DJ in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude. It, it, it's pretty wild though. I didn't, I, I had a hard time wondering what, what was that about? And I'm, I just saw it and I was like, this is from Twitch. Like since yeah. when is Twitch put out stuff like this? Like their advertisements have always been like really calm, really mellow, and straight to the point, which is great because I love those. Like you know exactly what they're advertising. By the time you get you know from start to finish, like you see some cool clips or something from TwitchCon or so on and so forth. But then you got that, and you're like, what? What? What just happened? Yeah, right. I I thought it was funny because uh, my wife saw the advert. She's watching Hulu, you know, and there's pre-roll ads on Hulu for Twitch, and you know, it's just like I I don't know. I don't, I just uh, like, babe, I, can't, I can't even describe it myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I saw a commercial for Twitch, but I I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a commercial it, for Twitch. It's like you you guys know you guys know the the conversations you have when they're like, so what do you do? And you're like, yeah, I stream on Twitch. And that conversation gets awkward with people. This is not making that any better. <laughs> no, no, not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so going on to the next topic, we got. Our state of the stream is what they call it from stream elements. Every quarter they come out with uh, some more data that shows how some of the, uh, the streaming platforms are doing. Although this is a partial report, they haven't released their full report, which is usually like a 10 page thing, which is really cool because it dives into the metrics of uh, what people are watching, who, where they're watching it at, how long they're consuming their content, um, streamers going live on all the platforms and so on and so forth. It tracks everything. Uh, the, this company called Arsenal GG, which is actually pretty cool, uh, actually goes and actually does a lot of the, pulls all this data constantly from all the platforms, and they really track um, things very heavily, a lot more than I've seen in other companies. Like only like big marketing firms basically get to the point where they're they're showing this stuff. If you haven't checked it out, uh, Arsenal uh, GG is the site. You could actually pull your own metrics from there. It's great. Uh, so what we're getting into here is they're showing a uh, just a panel from just like hours watched on platform in Q3 2019, which Q3 just ended, I believe, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Mixer, they know a couple of things. Uh, Mixer's big move to, I mean, Ninja's big move to Mixer made little impact on Twitch as it continues to expand the gap between the two platforms. So now Mixer came up a little bit. They said, they, I think it was something like 5% or something or 8%. It jumped. Which is also, you know, it's good for Mixer. I, I think Mixer is still a fantastic platform. Um, they still, there's, there is a few things like I would complain about personally about Mixer, but it's just, you know, they're minor, minor little tidbits. But it's just because we're, you get the, you get an experience elsewhere too, so it's different. Um, but it goes off the main thing in September, Twitch, uh, YouTube Live, and Mixer all experienced their lowest amount of hours watched in Q3, but traditionally as a slower month of the year over year. But apparently it was even it was like something on, uh, on their other report. It was like 11 11 percent drop in overall viewership across the platforms from year over year. So weird. September is being low. I don't understand how that is. Maybe unless with it's uh, with uh, like kids going back to school, people going back to college, kids going back to school, stuff like that. That yeah, would probably be the sense. biggest thing. Yeah. Um, Facebook bucks viewership in EBB and flow and trend by showing massive 41 percent growth in September. Which doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, I mean, on this chart here, I'll actually post it in chat too, so you all can look at it. If you're data nerds like me, I I really enjoy this kind of stuff. Uh, so you see, July, August, September it shows all three stats, and Facebook, however, did 
a massive jump instead of a decrease like everybody else, which is weird. It's like Twitch went from 932 hours watched to 777 million or millions, I should say. Mixer went from 40 million to 29 million. And then, then you had Facebook that went from 37 million to 53 million, which is like what? <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. Because yeah. I know I know a few people who were on Facebook who who stepped off of Facebook and went to Mixer or Twitch recently. Yeah. I mean, first it, I was thinking like maybe it's that college affiliation with Facebook, but it's like it doesn't really have that affiliation so, anymore. So, so the one yeah. thing that I can imagine with it too is so is what happens is when people watch a little less video content, they'll go back to their social media platforms, interact with their friends, their family, their people they're going to school with, or whatever. I mean, Facebook is still the largest social media network that's out there, as mm -hmm. far as I know, because like you know everybody's on it, and it's not just an age demographic. Whereas like Twitter's kind of in an age age demographic in businesses, right? I think it. Part of that is probably because everybody's going back to school and using Facebook and stuff again. They're getting to see that content, but that's also been the thing with, with Facebook is they also inflate their numbers a little bit. So, for example, yeah. if you go and find their content, you're following a page that has their, you know, they're doing uh, live content and you scroll past it, that counts as a view for that channel, even though you don't stay on it for any significant amount of time. You could just right. pass it and be like, cool, I'm going to watch this for like a minute or two. And then you're like, okay, cool, I'll keep scrolling in my feed. Um, so I think that's probably it. And the fact that it's just activity was up probably in Facebook is where that came from. That's just my speculation. Uh, so that's an interesting one. Uh, the final note on here is Twitch's percentage of the market also grew roughly 3% since, uh, Q2, which is also a different thing. Um, usually at this time, everybody trends down for the end of the third quarter. And then we get into, of course, like winter and stuff like that, where everything spikes back up really hard. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes. I don't know if y'all like metrics or not, but I mean, here we go. We that's, had a little that's bit of crazy yeah. with the, the huge move with mixer and stuff, how it, I mean, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it really, it really didn't do anything. Yeah. It's cause it was like that news was everywhere. And just to see yeah. like these, these numbers is like really alarming. It's like, wow, I well, really didn't do nothing. <laughs> And I know for like a week, my Twitter feed was switching to Mixer. Like everybody was switch, switching over to Mixer, but it, it just didn't seem like it, it doesn't stuck. seem like it did anything. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, oh, yeah, switch to Mixer, you know, go go for it. And then I was like thinking about it. I was like, there's really no need for me to be doing that. You know, like I'm I, I, I can just use Twitch and call it a day because I'm not I'm not going to cause any violations of any kind. So. I feel like a lot of people switched over and then they realized that the, the perks that you get from streaming with Twitch is so much better than what you get from Mixer yeah. that they just dropped out of Mixer and they were like, back to Twitch. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree I mean, with you, of... Bearded. Sorry, oh. it's up a, uh, Mixer messed up with a no follow-up after Ninja. And that's also very yeah. true, too. They didn't yeah, really yeah, follow yeah. up with anything big after that. No big event, no update to the platform like to bring monetization, right. which is still coming, like in their state of the stream thing. But um, sorry, go back to what, <laughs> what you're going for in uh, mine. Oh, I was just going to say, I think people, the problem is, is that people see what Ninja did. It's the same, it's the same thing that happened with Facebook when they brought, um, oh, what's his name? 429. He plays Destiny. Uh, I can't think what his name is, but Facebook paid both of those guys to come over and everyone sees that and they think, oh, if I go there, I'm going to grow too. But they don't realize there's so many things going on in the background that help these guys get their initial yeah. push and their exposure that you're not going to get as a normal person you know, just going over there. So I think that's part of what happened. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a startling thing. And it, but there, there is still like issues with, um, stuff like how Twitch channels are TOS, which really needs to be improved. Like that was that I have to say, like Mixer still is the, the golden example of what you should do right with your yeah. TOS. Yeah. Oh yeah. And sure. also having the staff that'll help enforce it too. Like Twitch, yeah. I mean, it's severely understaffed for the size of the platform. I mean, they still only have like 200 people across the globe for support. Like that's nothing in compared to the number of streamers that are on and how many reviews they have to go through and everything else, you know? Right. It's um, frustrating because you, you would think with how big they are, you know, they're so afraid to punish. I mean, that's the, the whole thing is favoritism, right? They don't want to punish the big people because they don't want to lose that viewership or, or that income. Money. Yeah. Yeah. But they're so big that just do it like what's going to happen these people are going to go somewhere else they're going to go to another channel on twitch you know and, right. and i don't know and they're not going to be accepted anywhere else like it, as you said mixer you know they handle their tos situations very well so oh, yeah. these streamers that they're 
that are breaking the rules, they're not going to be able to just go to Mixer and do the same thing. No, absolutely they're not. Have to go I mean, to like, D-Live. it's the same thing with uh, what's her face, Armoranth. You know, she got banned yeah. a few weeks ago, and, and apparently only ended up being a two-day ban, which I didn't understand that. Like, she did one of the things you're definitely not supposed to do on Twitch. Yeah, like that's their one like hard, you know, one written hard rule, like no nudity on screen. Like that's yeah. that's a given one, and she did it. I'm like, come on, guys, like yeah. Well, what she does every day is pretty close anyway, so. Yeah, right. I've, I've I've seen a few things. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. But what one? it's one of those situations, like, what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. Tutu, I, I think uh, we can move on to the game releases thing. I know you want to talk about this first topic here, man. Because I know I'm just as excited as you are about this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so after all the rumors and speculation, it has finally been revealed that Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming to PC on November 5th. What? Um, yes. What? Finally, I, I missed know. this. Yes. <laughs> so there, there is a, a couple things about this. Um, so when it comes to PC, it's going to be... Uh, right now, you can pre-order it on the uh, new Rockstar Games launcher, which just got released. No, no on the 9th. On the 9th. Oh, on the 9th. Okay, so next week you can pre-order on the new Rockstar Games launcher. Um, and then on October 22nd, you can pre-order on the Epic Games Store, Green Man Gaming, Humble Bundle Store, uh, or GameStop. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that. But there's going to be a Steam version coming. The Steam version is coming uh, in December, so it's like a month wait. Not as bad as, uh, you know, other games, but still kind of sucks and right now i'm kind of debating like should i wait for steam or should i i you know i'm not gonna lie i there's so many games coming out in november i think i might just wait till december because december's there's there's only like two big game releases and i might just push it to then like as much as i want to play it i I would love to play it but it'd either be on rockstar or it's steam yeah Yeah. like because the the cool thing with the rockstar purchase i forgot to mention as well if you buy it uh one of the incentives for buying it off of the rockstar launcher is you get um you get like 20% off like each edition, um, which is really cool. So even like the, the most expensive edition, you get 20% off. Um, so that's like also really enticing. That's cool. And uh, yeah, plus I just, I just, I really want, I've been waiting for this so long. So I don't know, like, I, I feel like I can wait another month, of course, but I don't <laughs> want to, you know? I mean, I don't, yeah, what, I don't, do guys, what do you guys think from a content creation standpoint, since it's a game that's been played, you know, through console and Twitch a lot? Uh, yeah, that's the thing too, because I feel like it'll have that spike for like the first, you know, of course, the first like uh, week, first month, even. Yeah. But I think after that, that's, that's what I'm also thinking about as a content creator. Like after that, like how is it going to going to perform for you? Yeah. I think it's going to be big know. because of the, uh, the once the modding community gets a hand, hand of it and they start oh, making RP yeah. servers. Oh, and you're stuff, right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's when it's going to like go crazy. It's the, it's when it gets that those mods in, and it's going to be just you know it's going to go over the top yeah. of that. I'm yeah. very much looking forward to it because I I don't have an Xbox. Um, I don't have a PlayStation. I don't console game ever. The only thing I have is a Switch and it's hacked. So I don't have Red Dead and I don't have the opportunity to play it. And now that it's moving to PC, it's like I finally have that opportunity to play this game that I wanted to play for some time. So um, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, I know I'm going to be making content with it. So that's cool. I can't wait to yeah. see the mods for it. That's going to be insane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's right. Be, yeah. It's be crazy. I mean, oh you know, God. so I'm not going to lie. Like, I really like uh, the GTA RP, but I feel like the Red Dead RP would be like real interesting just because you don't yeah. have the same kind of like technology and stuff you do in GTA 5. Yeah. So I think yeah. uh, Red Dead's going to be. And they, they've somewhat been incorporating it with online too because they have like their roles. Like, you could be like a bounty hunter. Uh, be like uh like a salesperson all kinds of stuff um, can't wait for it'll, someone it'll be cool them. to see like the mod community take a handle at that can't uh, wait to see someone cool. turn horses into giant mechs <laughs> <laughs> oh god but you guys a lot of you guys have mentioned in the chat like new launcher like yeah i, I don't know I won't, i'm not with it damn launcher uh is it what's the no, company making know. the single launcher for all the launchers that, is it gog oh, yeah i think it's gog i think yeah. <laughs> it's a launcher for all the launchers. Yeah. And it's it's actually it's pretty good too. Like I've used it on and off, but the new Steam update is so pretty. Oh my god. I still can't stop about talking about how the new Steam launcher looks so good. <laughs> like it gives you the the sorting features and add like the little collections thing. It's it's really good. Really good. It's yeah, it's it's God Galaxy 2.0. Oh yeah, god okay. galaxy, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh the other big thing is 
crossplay is finally becoming a big reality for everybody. Sony has finally dropped all problems with crossplay. So they are fully yep. crossplay with the first game actually went full crossplay aside of Rocket League is uh PUBG. So that's now crossplay across the, all the consoles. That's awesome. Um so they've kind of dropped all that ball, which is great. Um one of the other big updates for gaming is Assassin's Creed Odyssey is finally getting its final update after it's all this big, you know, season pass and everything. And I don't it doesn't seem like they're going with another season pass. So it may, might be where we're that's where it stops and we get the new Assassin's Creed sometime to, probably next next fall. Uh but there's they're celebrating it with a 5 week in-game event which is going to be pretty interesting, I think. I I have to get back into that game cuz I love it. It's so good like in terms of yeah. like the content and the stories and the missions. To be honest, this yeah. is the only reason right now I'm still subscribed to you play plus. So you can play it? <laughs> yeah. Dude, and point. there's hundreds of hours. Like the main game is already like 200 plus hours. And then every like new like uh story section they add is like another 50 hours. Like you have so much content to play. Uh so I'm I'm really excited about that. Going back to the crossplay thing, you know, that's that's huge. I mean, it, this has been kind of like an ongoing battle for the past like couple of years. Remember, it started with, you know, a lot of people give Fortnite shit, but, you know, Fortnite was like the pioneer to get crossplay started, really. Yeah. Because um, they, they did that thing where they flipped the switch and, and it happened and people were like, oh, it's really that easy? And they're like, yeah, it's really that easy. And then, you know, it's just been like a battle. So, and now to and get I think here that's why... to where... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say it's like now to get here to where it's just like fully open. They're yeah. no longer in beta is, is amazing. So that's what I was thinking. Um, is like it, they they finally. I think they just were like, you know, there's no reason not to at this point. And I'm sure at some point, you know, someone some uh, some good person came into a CEO meeting and was like, oh, by the way, we're not actually losing any money through crossplay. And yeah. they're like, oh, then why don't we just open it? And then they yeah. did, and they're like, okay, cool. Because that was a big argument was that and then just PlayStation being scared of like sharing, you know, ecosystems with Xbox and stuff like that. Um, right. Well, they're but, worried about the money going away. They're like, oh, if, yeah. if there's, if there's uh, you know, monetization transactions for, you know, like the in-game stores or something. Where's that money going to go? And I think right. they finally started like, well, if they're on your platform, then you're getting the money like not Xbox or not fucking Steam or not Epic Game Store or anything. It's like, no, they're playing on yeah. your platform, which you're already dominating in the console market next to Switch. You got the money. You're good. I remember Dust Five One Four. Oh my um, god! Dude. Yeah, we're talking about full crossplay with every platform, but yeah, Dust Five One Four did have what PS3 and PC. Yeah, that was for the yeah for Eve. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that that was an interesting time. We'll we'll move on from that though. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so going on with game industry news. Um, mind one or minus? You guys want to take one of these? Uh, okay. I can take the uh, PlayStation one um, Go for it. related to our previous um, discussion. According to GamesIndustry.biz, uh, Sony Interactive Asia Japan, uh, Japan Asia's president, um, I don't, can't say his name, uh, Sean retired. Um, Sean Layden and both two of them retired. Um, oh, the, yeah, yeah. the Japan one and Sean Layden retired from PlayStation. Weird um, at the same time. At, at the exact same time. And I think that that might be like an indication of something um something's going through the PlayStation like CEO groups and they're just like all yeah. right we're going to fire the people that are not working for so us. So rumor has it that there's like just like kind of like a um a, a really like hard f fight over like the like direction of the PS5 in terms of like leadership so um they're like really uh letting go of people. It's really really Yeah, it's it's um it looks like you know it's getting in the getting in the right direction, um, especially with the um, crossplay. I'm hoping stuff starts popping up a little more. Um, I know one thing I'm looking for, to be honest with you, is um, PlayStation exclusives. There are a lot of big PlayStation exclusives that PlayStation signs to be an exclusive. I'm curious to see if they're going to allow porting of those games to other consoles and systems. I mean, Quantic, um, what is it, Quantic mm. Dreams or whatever? Is uh, all their games, all their exclusive games are now going to be on Epic Game Store, like right, Detroit Become is, Human and Until Dawn and some right, of those other ones. which is yeah. why I was like, you know, my my big hope, and I know this is a big hope, but the Metal Gear series, mm -hmm. being able to see the Metal Gear series on on 
on you know i don't even care if it's on epic i'll download if it's on epic that but one might not that's... be because that's still konami and konami's real stingy with their stuff but it'd be, yeah, it would konami's be a good dream little, to have it's yeah a, it's a dream to have and it and now it seems like it's possible yeah i could definitely see that become a thing yeah anyway i'm done my spiel's over <laughs> <laughs> tutu take the next one yeah go for it tutu Okay, so uh, this is a really random one, but one that you can kind of see coming. Uh, so Mario Luigi RPG developer Alpha Dream has gone bankrupt. Uh, they were founded in 2000. Alpha Dream was originally known as Alpha Star. And um, according to Yahoo Japan, revenue was sluggish in recent years and development costs drove the studio into the red. As of March 2018, Alpha Dream was 400 million yen, yen uh, in debt. That's equivalent of $3.7 million. Um so if you're unfamiliar with Alpha Dream, they did a bunch of the uh, Mario and Luigi RPG games, which were like amazing games back in yeah, the day. They were. As of late, they kind of like kind of been stale because it's kind of like the same old, same old. But um, like back on uh, Game Boy Advance and things like that, they were so good. Um, but you can kind of see like how and why they went bankrupt. I mean, it's, it's, it's no surprise. Uh, it's sad, of course, but uh, it's, it's, it's no surprise. I think yeah. uh, Mario and Luigi, one of their RPGs, that was one of my first RPG games that I ever played, and and it kind of got me into that genre of game. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Well, this is the uh, I want to say it's either Partners in Time or Inside Story. I think it was one of the first ones I played of that like set of uh, Mario and Luigi games. Yeah, because uh, those were those were dope. But last year they yeah. they kept like re-releasing the same one, just like with new story elements and i'm just kind of like why not just make a new one i don't yeah. know if it was like a money i guess maybe it was a money thing or, or whatever but um, well it's kind of tough with you know because as big as mario and luigi are the universe like the story potential isn't that grand if you really think about it so yeah and yeah. They, it seems like they did run out of ideas with the story too the thing about yeah. nintendo is a lot of their ips are um kind of like they're money makers you know mario and luigi it's the biggest names you know if you think you tell some old lady video game she goes like mario like they're huge they're huge in terms of revenue but you can't yeah. just put mario and luigi in a game and then expect it to sell yeah you got to do what nintendo does and you got to start selling the game and making the game functional before it sells under a mario title you know yeah oh, absolutely it's, it's sad to see. I don't, I don't, I mean, Mario and Luigi obviously is a big, uh, big IP, but at the same time, it's like, well, they weren't releasing enough. It's, it's a hard market to be in now, especially for game devs. Yeah. They're not releasing yeah. stuff either consistently or updates to keep people buying the game and so on and so forth. So it's, it's definitely tough. Um, so in continuing on with Tutu's weekly deals and cool stuff. <laughs> Go for it, man. Okay, yeah, too, too. so I this um, for you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I've been uh, doing it recently. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> so right, I didn't even know about this one. This one's crazy. So first off, right off the bat, um, you can get a free month of Origin access uh, by enabling two-factor authentication. So um, if anyone's interested, uh, Origin access, you can play like all the uh, EA Origin games pretty much. Um, so you can hop on that. I think. Uh, so you need to do it before the end of October. So if you want, you could probably just delay it and then get on at the end of October. So you have like all November to play um, those games. And I will throw this link here in the chat for anybody interested. Oh, I got it. I got it in there. All the origin. Ones. Thank you. Uh, so continuing on, this is all Steam, right? Uh, my yeah, the, okay. everything so, except the very bottom part um, of Steam. Nice, nice. So Civ Six is uh seventy percent off right now, going for seventeen ninety nine. Elder Scrolls Online is fifty percent off right now, going for nine ninety nine. That one's usually always on sale, and I'm yeah. always like, kind of, should I buy it? Should I? But I haven't bought it yet. So <laughs> dude, it's, 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 if you actually <laughs> yeah, do I'm it, dude, I, I would play that MMO with you because I've got the the new Elsewhere uh, DLC, yeah. and it's all got dragons and everything in it. Uh, dude, I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition is uh, seventy eight percent off or eight seventy nine on Steam. Dying Light Two sixty sixty six percent off. Uh, no, oh my God, I said Dying Light Two. I don't want that game. So <laughs> Dying Light. But the original Dying Light sixty six percent off for uh, thirteen fifty nine. Just Cause Three is eighty five percent off for two ninety nine. And there's a free game on the Epic Game Store called Minute. Um, and also 
real quick plug. I'm sure most of you guys know, but uh, <clears throat> Destiny 2 is free to play right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hop on that, of course. Yeah, yeah definitely. Can, get I, that can I add a uh, snippet on to that um, Epic Games thing? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, say what you want about Epic, but they've got some uh, really cool deals. And right now, for whatever reason, they've got get a free game to play every week. Dude, yeah, I wish we did a insane. show the week they did. They came for the the Batman thing because they yeah. had yeah. six Batman games. Yeah. They had the they had Arkham six trilogy Batman games and the, um, the Lego Batman. Tri- last week was the game. This game called Everything, which is very cute and like actually a, a good play. Um, this week it's Minute. Next week is Surviving Mars, which I'm very oh, much, that's a big I, one. That's a I good will game plug too. that game as hard as physically possible. This game is it started so out bad because cool. the tutorial there was no tutorial in the beginning of that in the yeah. original launch, but they yeah. finally fixed that. There's no tutorial in the first, you know, in the first launch, but like as it stands, um, <laughs> Sur- Surviving Mars is probably one of my uh, one of my top ten games of all time. So if you if you don't like the Epic Launcher, but you're like me and you can handle having it, go get that game and play it. My Epic library is is gigantic right now. Oh my God, yes. I have, I've I've only bought Borderlands three, but the rest of the games <laughs> I've gotten for free. Yeah, dude, same here. Now I think about it, I've only bought Borderlands three as well. <laughs> I bought, like the games I bought, I bought a few. Well, we got we got the World War Z, say, uh, Borderlands, yeah. and then uh, what was the other one we got? Satisfactory. Satisfactory. Oh yeah, okay. I've got those two. I've and, got Satisfactory. Um, observation that the that. <laughs> Now, talking about a horror game that you should probably get into, mine one, Observation Man. Oh, that's, God, That is a fantastic story. Yeah. And it's, Truly, like a, it's like a good, like, six six to eight hour play. It's called, what's it called? Observation? Observation. Observation. It's on the Epic Store. Okay. And that's a, that's a is solid. Is it jump scare play. scary, or is it like? No, it's like mystery scary. Like, okay. once in a while, you'll get. body a, can handle any more jump scares. You'll get, like. <laughs> In the entire game, the only spoiler I give you is there's like maybe three jump scares in the entire thing. Okay. But the rest is like mystery, like finding out what's happening. The story's good. It's creepy. It's like you got yeah, crazy okay. vine stuff on the walls. Like it's it's nuts. All right, I'll check it out. That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, if not, you can always go with the Outlast games. I've got Outlast two. You can get if you don't if you don't already have it. <laughs> yeah. Right. We ready? Yeah, so our big top story for today, microtransactions. Companies are getting back into microtransactions again, and by God, it came back with a vengeance this time. Yeah. Uh, So getting back on some of the things we were talking about earlier in the show is Ghost Recon Wildlands also came out this week. Uh, It came out early access on Friday for people who got the Ultimate Editions. And then uh, Destiny 2 also came back out. But man, Destiny 2 actually came back with more microtransactions now than it ever did. Now, Destiny 2... I will defend. Well, no, no. <laughs> so we'll, get, we'll dig into it. Yeah. So like, we'll start with Destiny Two. This is actually a good uh, an example of how you do microtransactions right. 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 Yeah. Like it's a good thing. So you buy your coin, your silver, and you buy uh, ship colors, finishing moves, which is the only one that's kind of weird. I mean, all finishing finishing moves do the same thing. They're just different ways of doing them. Yeah. Um, your ornament sets, which are like your armor modifications to make it look pretty. I actually got one of those shameful of me but <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the thing is like destiny 2 like my biggest defense about it is free to play now so yeah, it's like yeah. they gotta support so this somehow. stuff is, yeah exactly i mean you do have to buy the new new expansion pack and, or season stuff which is com- coming in by way of basically a season pass yeah um you don't have to well, they went the way wait. of wow which is you buy the latest two expansions and you get the rest of it for free yeah yeah, yeah. um but it does have quite a bit of the stuff i didn't uh, we were trying to prepare a way to show it on screen, too. I also didn't get a chance to do that today. I apologize. Um, but it does have quite a bit. Now, on the opposite end, now where I don't think microtransactions were good at all. But I, in, f- in fact, first look at when I looked at them, they were actually fine. I was like, okay, it's cool. It's like you get some bandanas and a hat and, you know, clothes and uh, gun skins, like paints and stuff like that. But yeah. then they had one that was really, really nasty. They had... Uh, booster and skill point microtransactions, which I actually had in, in uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey too, but that's a single player game. Whereas Breakpoint, in every way, shape, or form, is an online game. Like yeah. you play it with your friends, you're online, you can join people randomly that you can, you know, pop in, pop out, which is great. But they they had the booster and skill point microtransactions. Now, granted, they removed them this week because people complained about them so hard, which I'm very, very happy about. 
but at the same time, it's like no, they they still got like boosters for like weapons. I just checked this morning. They still oh, yeah. got boosters for weapons and something else. Uh I forgot, but the weapon ones are, are not bad because all all the upgrades, if you level up your weapon, all you get is like attachments that you're allowed to equip on that weapon, which is cool. Like it's something simple, right? But yeah. the, the the permanent like skill point boosters and you know uh skill point, yeah, basically experience and skill point boosters were ridiculous. Like that's that's actually pay to win, like in every way, shape, yeah. or form, especially the skill yeah. points one because you're unlocking different abilities that you could use. In, in multiplayer and with your friends and all that kind of stuff, but I'd like you know to hear. Who did microtransactions right? Was Valve? They uh, with with crates and keys. Um, I have never, you know, talk about Destiny Two. We could talk about you know Ghost Recon all day. EA, the disaster that was Star Wars, but you don't ever hear anyone complaining about Valve's system. No. And I think it's because Valve did it in a truly honest method where they were like, this is what you get. These are the keys. You can buy them through market. You can buy them through other people. You know, you have they have this whole Steam marketplace. No one complains about it. But no. when EA comes out with something that's completely pay to win, you know, um, they've got you spend fifty dollars to get the end game items. It's like, what's the point? You know, yeah. you're giving everyone else, you're giving everyone else, especially Valve, a bad name. Yeah. Oh, you give everybody. Yeah, you, you affect everybody when you do that. Exactly. But, but Mike, what do you think about some of the microtransactions? Because I know you've been a big, big vocal person in the past about microtransactions. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is if it's done right, and it's just like. uh for, for cosmetics and stuff like that, it's fine. The The biggest problem I have is when people who, you know, what, what do you guys call them, whales? When they're whales in games and they buy all the end game content and they, and they boost themselves all the way to the end, those are the ones that then complain about not enough content. And so that's, that's where I think a lot of times microtransactions fail and then also just giving people benefits and, and the pay to win aspect. Um, I just, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't mind them the way Destiny did them this time around. I think is great. Um, I've never had a problem with silver in the past because it was always just cosmetic. Uh, but but then you get the games where you're getting power boosts and skill boosts and XP boosts and stuff like that, where you're paying for that kind of thing. Then, and I don't think pay to progress is that bad either. Really, I think pay to progress is fine. It's just when you're getting excess power for money and not everyone can do it, that's when there's an issue. Yeah, and then a part of the thing, like the one thing I will defend on, on Ghost Recon Breakpoint, even though they did have the XP and uh, skill point boosters, they were giving you those as you leveled up too. So like you were still yeah. getting XP boosters and also bonus skill points every couple levels too. So it's not like you were really starved for it, but when you had a, a thing, when you have the earning aspect of it built in with the micro microtransactions, then, and then you're getting people that are going all the way to the end saying, oh, I don't have any content, or they're also playing to a point where they're, making it un, you know not fun for other players either because they're yeah. they're not caught up to that point either which is also right. a game killing thing as it as its own too definitely yeah when you when you've boosted your character so far that you just literally crap on everyone it's you're making it not fun for anyone so not only are you complaining that you have nothing left to do <laughs> but you're making everyone else's life hell playing that game yeah, yeah. which i don't, I don't understand know. I, is they, they did i feel like they did the sorry to cut you off the the division two they did that right on that regards on microtransactions same thing yeah, it's, it's, sure. it's just cosmetics and little cosmetics. simple stuff and i'm yeah. like it's the same company and literally i think even part of the same studio that worked on division two is working on wildland i mean uh, breakpoint so why are why is this even happening like this is yeah. stupid sorry go yeah, ahead. I, 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 even with the free-to-play stuff i mean if you, i understand you know the microtransactions in a free-to-play game is to support that game and it's totally legit as long as again like you guys said if we do it the right way but I don't understand microtransactions in a game that you have to pay full price for and then also pay DLC prices for and also pay expansion prices for. Like, I don't I don't get that. It yeah. should just be you paid the price or, you know, play the game to earn the, the, the uh -oh. rewards. Yeah, like, I love I love Ubisoft stuff. Everyone. Uh, I love uh, Ubisoft stuff. But that that's also one of the things, too, is like, yeah, you're paying a premium price for the game. Then you're getting its season. It's first season pass, which is probably only good for the first year. And I think this one's actually yeah. a year one season pass then you're doing additional season passes which are like 30 bucks every year so it's like why are you even why do you even have uh microtransactions like that to begin with like cosmetic yeah. sure if you want to make your character pretty and 
you know, buy, spend five or ten bucks here and there, whatever. Like, yeah. people on Fortnite do it all the time, but that's also a free right. game, and they're buying cosmetics for the game, not XP boost or power boost or whatever. So, Absolutely. like, in, in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, there is almost literally no reason it should be there, period. Yeah. Like, cosmetics, like money. I said, maybe, sure. If you want to make your character pretty or make them look more elite or whatever, sure. Yeah. But the rest, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that. Yeah. You know, well, and I like, um, what is it? Dauntless, they do it right. I think as much as everyone craps on Fortnite, their season pass, they do it right. Apex has a season pass, now they do it right, where it's like, you are you pay to earn these extra re rewards, the game is still free, so, you know, you're, you're, you're paying to get extra content that you don't need. You're just doing right. it for player, and I think that's Mo okay. Mojang yeah. did it right. Uh, Mojang was the first one, I think, that I know of, at least, to restrict uh, microtransactions, and they did it through their EULA, where they were like, you're no longer allowed to sell you know, items that help you progress in the game, like swords and axes and stuff. Yeah. You're no longer allowed to sell, you know, like food and stuff. Um, if it's an in-game item that's not purely cosmetic, you're not allowed to sell it. Um, and they, they tightened down um, the monetization of Minecraft servers pretty hard. Um, and it worked. Um, it actually became super effective in... Um, you know, limiting what kind of what kind of like overpowered stuff people have um, by giving servers money. And I think personally, it was probably one of the best moves that they could have done. Mm -hmm. um, and I wish that a lot of these other companies followed suit. You know, you're not allowed to sell items that give you an advantage in the game. Mm -hmm. um, you're not allowed to um, give money to, you know, win the game, etc. I would rather that they just give you, you know, I give you thirty dollars and I get this cool skin that has a particle effect and I get to flex on people. Like that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Warframe's yeah, yeah. really good with microtransactions as well because pretty much like everything that you can uh, buy, you can earn in game minus, of course, a couple of cosmetics. Right. And uh, they've even had instances where they removed a couple of microtransactions just because people were spending too much money on them. And you know, <laughs> that's that's really. I think you said something similar to that, and that's really like rare. To, right. Yeah, and it, well, I think part of the thing too is like everybody we're we're if you guys deal with Adobe and stuff, they're the subscription based lifestyle. People are starting to really get sick of that. Yeah. But if you think about it, they've just they've just reskinned subscription based and call it a season pass. I right, mean, that's basically right. what they've done. It's the same. But then thing. they get greedy, you know. Then they they're like, oh well, these guys will buy the season pass. Let's also add these other transactions in that will that you know these fourteen fifteen. 17 35 year old guys will buy and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's, I don't know. it's nuts I, i'm i'm upset about it um personally because i'm a, you know i'm a broke college kid i don't have that much money um and my money is important elsewhere right now um i don't want to be spending 35 dollars to get the rest of a game that i already spent 60 dollars for just exactly. give me the damn game yeah yeah i agree with that 100 percent yeah. And regardless if you're broke or not, I think it's dumb that you pay a premium price for a game and then have to pay more to play the rest of it. That doesn't make right. any sense to me. No, and, yeah. that, and that's the start. That's hard, right? Like it's it's challenging, and like especially like Breakpoint. If you don't, if you didn't even look at the microtransactions, the game itself is fantastic. It's way, it's a huge step over Wildlands, and the fact that they, yeah. they kind of turned it into a, a quasi like looter shooter too. Also, is you know, it's turned out pretty good. Like I like that. Like, I like working, feeling like I'm working towards something. And then that regard is gear. Like, in Wildlands, it was cool. Like, you could, you know, you didn't really have an upgrade or, you know, you upgraded your skills and stuff like that, and you got better skills to use on the field. But gun-wise, you never had any of that option. Like, you kind of just went and found your next gun, and if you had to find a cool gun, or you figure out, you know, where people say, hey, cool, this is where you find these weapons and whatnot, and you go to do that and do it. It was okay you know it was okay but it didn't give you a, feel, a sense of purpose for the game whereas like right. breakpoint gives you that quasi you know like i said looter shooter kind of feel to it and now you feel like you're working towards something it gives you an objective you can keep going and get a certain gear and you can go to certain areas where it's a little harder versus others you know that are not locked by you're playing the mission or whatever so some of the, some aspects are really good it's just a, sh a shame that they did uh some of the microtransactions now the bad microtransactions are now gone so that just to make that clear, everybody, they're all gone now, as far as I know. Um, Tutu was actually trying to give me an image of it, but I wasn't loading. Yeah. Let's have to look at look for that here in a second. But it's it's definitely really interesting in how they do that. Um, 
one thing I gotta say that I'm I've gotten real tired of, and a lot of devs are doing like real good with like removing it is uh, season passes. Uh, God, I freaking hate season passes. Uh, <laughs> Ubisoft is like they're still the biggest offender when it comes to season passes. Every game they release has to have like a season pass and you know the one hundred dollar edition, one hundred twenty dollar edition. Yeah. It's it's that's getting real tired. At the, at, the, at the same time, though, they're they're not re releasing a game every year, though, too. So you're instead you're you're keeping the same game that you might have bought in the beginning. Now you're just updating it to get the, get the newest content. So it's a it's a plus and a minus, right? Like it's a plus because you're getting new content, but it's a minus because you know you're well plus because you're not having to buy a new game every year and you're getting updates for it. But the minus is that you have to get new DLC every year. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. I remember I was so excited for Far Cry 5. Uh, like, I love the base Far Cry 5. I instantly bought the season pass for it. That season pass was one of the worst season passes I've ever <laughs> played in my life because those DLCs were complete ass. It was it was well, ridiculous. I think that's the other problem, too, is, you, is as a gamer and as a content creator and just as, you know, an enthusiast, you always, you feel like you have to buy the biggest, you yeah, know, exactly. the biggest pack. Yeah, and right. I. I can say that every time I've dropped at least a hundred bucks on a game, it I, lately it hasn't been worth it. Like it, you don't feel like you yeah. got that money out of it. No, you know, I would rather just paid the the sixty dollars and and played the game to its fullest and not feel like I'm you know missing out because I didn't pay that extra thirty dollars for the the shirt or the gun or whatever. Well, that's you're a challenge, right? Too, right? Like I, I felt like that. I felt like that way for Borderlands. Like I didn't feel like I could have gotten the the low end edition for that. I, yeah, exactly. All. Yeah. <laughs> Bearded in chat um, made a really, really good point. Um, I wish the games as a service plan would actually work, but they release unfinished products and promise it'll be better. Yeah. That is like brutally on the nose. A yeah, lot of companies actually. nowadays are just like, here's the game that we sort of finished. Like, enjoy the DLC when it comes out and you have to pay for it. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the game that we didn't right. finish. That you enjoy have to the pay rest for. of the game that's not finished right now. <laughs> And it's yeah. sad because we've had games as a service for like many years now and it's still not like has it been like perfected, you know? Right. Yeah. That kind of just style. The problem is how do we fix it? You know, as an industry, we can't you you know, everybody says don't pre order. I get I get crap all the time in my chat, actually today, because Destiny called me out while I was playing that I pre ordered and I told everybody I didn't pre order it. Uh, <laughs> <Whoops. nice. laughs> yeah. and uh you know but but how do you how do you stop because by one or two or five people not pre-ordering it's not going to change anything no i mean it's not making a big enough difference but at the same time i i it's it's hard with the developers right they have to go in kind of like the triangle resources time and money so right. like you know the amount of people that are working on it takes the amount of time to complete it and then the money pays for all of that in the process and if one of the two ends up being a weak point and they end up having to release the game at a certain time or they go and they don't have enough time they have the money and they have the resources but they don't have enough time because you know executives made the deadline hey we want it out this holiday season we have to have it now and that's also like you know on a developer standpoint i'm i understand that i'm i'm in qa like i get how those, those stressful times come when You've got to work extra hours and do all that stuff to try to make your deadlines and whatnot. And the game industry is brutal for that. Like, it's ridiculously brutal for it. Yeah, uh, in chat, um, again, another great conversation in chat that's going on. Um, boycotts would be good. Organize one boycott out of a single major game as a service and then watch what happens. Have you ever tried to get a group of gamers yeah. to do one synchronized thing? <laughs> they tried to do that with Borderlands, remember? Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Have you ever I tried really to do one thing and have everyone do it it's next to impossible yeah. well yeah, and the, the thing is is that it's so split i think i mean there are people right. who don't think that this is an issue you know they 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 will defend it tooth and nail even if the even if it doesn't make sense like it doesn't make sense to us but to them it it totally makes sense and they're okay with it and so right. you know there's i just don't it's think a, it's a big enough split it's a really good idea um, you know if everyone suddenly was like ea screw you i'm not buying your games until you fix your games EA would suffer and it would be painful, but the mm. chances of that happening is so. I know that's well, what you're saying. I, they're I they're also you, just... some of them are so big though that they it's it's hard. They could take the hit if they wanted to. Like EA right. definitely well, would it, take the hit, or Ubisoft would it, definitely take the hit. 
And honestly, they would take the hit and then do something next month that everyone would go, okay, we forgive you. And then they'd right. go back to doing it anyways. Yeah, exactly. Because they kind of go back and forth on those, those kind of things. I right? mean, <laughs> Epic is a huge example. <laughs> everyone was crapping on Epic, but they give you free games. So why not? Right. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm, exactly I'm still getting a crap I, for I a lack of features, though, because they still don't have a fucking shopping cart. That's pissing well, me no, off. Well, no, that's terrible, but still, they give you free games. <laughs> every time you bring up the shopping cart, it's just crazy to yeah, wrap my terrible. mind. <laughs> well, the shopping cart or the fact you can't go in and uh, view it by, yeah, you know, by, like, sections or categories, like, that's still ridiculous. Like, how they, that's a, <laughs> that's a sorting feature a college student could make in 20 minutes. Like, come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> I think it's crazy you can't gift games to people. You have to literally log into their account and buy it. You can't just gift a game yeah. through Epic. Yeah, but, you yeah know, game gifting is also another big thing. But they give me free games. <laughs> <laughs> they do give me pre -ga free games, so yeah, I'm not really complaining it, you know? about it. <laughs> they ran over my dog, and then but they give me free games. <laughs> <laughs> they ran over my dog, but they gave me everything for free, so I'll call it a day. <laughs> uh... So I think we're we're good for today's topics. Do we have anything else we want to cover, guys? Um, you know, I'll mention the Homeworld Three update. Um, they uh, had a crowdfunding campaign, uh, which had a target of just one dollar. Um, has topped a million dollars. Um, is it really just one dollar? Yeah, the, I didn't the even goal see was just one dollar. The aim was to get fans to uh board to give feedback on board to give feedback. And it raised a million dollars, um, and still has a couple of uh, still has a couple of days to run. Um, what a Home great World PR! Three is due yeah. out in twenty twenty two. I don't know if they have the release date um, in uh, in the chat, but um, yeah, they they have a um, they have a campaign, a fig campaign that I will um, send to you guys to link in chat um because i can't apparently send links in chat oh god they're at 1.5 million now so it's yeah it's in general right now um but there are 1.5 million of one dollar goal um whoever came up with that should be should run yeah. the company that's yeah. a great yeah. pr um, yeah and, and, and the the campaign is actually officially over now but you can actually still invest in the campaign and become still, a backer. yeah you can still give them money um so yeah homeworld three um Still, uh, still going forward. Bearded, I like Broketober. Um, I don't know <laughs> if there's any. I don't know if there's any big releases that I'm looking forward to per se. Um, so many. But I, <laughs> yeah, I can so say, many. I can say that um, with full confidence, October this month for me is going to be the month of the Goose Game. Oh, dude! So many people were at TwitchCon were talking about that game. It is ridiculous. It's, Goose Game. I'm, I'm Goose so game. Untitled un Goose Game. Untitled, untitled Goose, Goose game. game. The what funniest game to create. Yeah, it's to come it's out. just become like a you literally You literally just go around playing a goose, being the biggest asshole you possibly can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's literally, it's, it's, it's designed to let you terrorize like a town for no particular reason other than you're a goose. Other than, yeah, nice. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be playing that pretty actively. <laughs> <laughs> dude it's it's fantastic i've i've heard it i even wanted to buy it just because of how ridiculous it is yeah i have it on my switch i'm ready to just play it for the next like i'm probably it's gonna a go lovely play it right morning now. in the village and you're a horrible goose <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so uh atlas or the one the other big release this week atlas gets its official release out of early access apparently this week which i didn't know about john wick hex also comes out this coming week actually Ooh. i, I pre-ordered that oh yes um get, get that Grid's coming out on October 11th, the new redesigned Grid, which I, is that an Ubisoft game? I can't remember. I think, uh, you know, I'm not going to speak on it. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know who it is. It's, it's an, it's, it's a good racing game. It's actually a fantastic yeah, racing is. game. It is a good racing game. Uh, what was the other one? Legend of Heroes, WWE, GK20, COD also comes out oh, this oh, month. Good. Yeah, COD. Oh my God. Modern Warfare. Damn. Yeah. comes out this month. Outer Worlds also comes out this month. After Party oh, comes uh, out this month. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> so, Broketober's real. Yeah, then. yeah Broketober. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi's yeah. Mansion 3 is also coming oh, out. Yeah. Uh, Harvest Moon Mad Dash, also on the 29th. Damn. I totally forgot about Outer Worlds, too. Yeah, so did I. Dude, but, That's going to be a good well, one. Well, COD is 50-50. Like, some people either love it or hate it. I kind of wanted to do it because I like Modern Warfare. Oh, I didn't get to play it. the betas, but I really want to do it. Um... 
after party I really like because I wanted to go and you know have drinks with devils. That's you know that's a that's a thing. Uh, Medieval is also coming back on October twenty fifth on PlayStation Four. That's another big one. I want it, but I feel like it's skippable because there's so many like big games, and it's like yeah, there's too many really big games to do it to like you know even though it's a remake, I don't really want to go. I mean, ne- next month isn't getting any better though. I mean, we've got um, Planet Zoo, we've got Death Stranding, That's we've right. got Need for Speed oh, yeah. Heat, we've got <laughs> yeah. Age of Empires Two Definitive Edition, we've got Stormland, Jumanji the Video Game, Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> Oh, mm, Star Wars go, Jedi bro. Fallen Order, <laughs> Shin Amumi Three. I'll, I'll post my GoFundMe link here. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to PayPal, it's uh, PayPal.me/supermidas. <laughs> like it's it's fucking ridiculous, dude. And then like December is the lightest month out of them all. Yeah, but still December is yeah. just like that catch up month where you just could go back and you know play what? everything. You miss December's out. the month where we buy each other games for Christmas. <laughs> right? <laughs> that too, yes. Just saying. Just saying. You know, if you guys wanna you know I'll you, buy you guys wait, each you... a season pass. <laughs> oh thank you. <laughs> here's your here's your free shirt in the game. <laughs> oh all right. man. but yeah it's it's an interesting month. What can I say? interesting bunch of time dude next year like even early next year is not better no like, i don't want you to yeah, look it no. up like, so, i'm sure you already dude like okay so this is the thing i'm trying to understand and it, and it started this year like end of like last fall wasn't that bad but the beginning of this year like the beginnings of the year now are like super terrible with how many releases are coming out like what the hell is with yeah, all these it's, developers it's like summer release? is like the dry season and yeah it's like it's weird but what why is it that everybody's trying to release in these tiny little windows like literally like march has like 27 games releasing in march like and over half of them are triple a titles like what is this going on (laughs) i don't know (laughs) they're trying to help us out so each each of us can stream a different game go you know go to more broke after christmas come on guys (laughs) (laughs) that's supposed to be recovery time i don't have enough time there's just not enough time to play all these games no yeah too many games, so little time. Oh, oh my gosh. But alrighty, guys and gals. If you guys haven't checked out all the fantastic streamers here on INN, definitely do so. Uh, we've got myself. I'm actually going to be here on the INN channel mostly now. Uh, Kid22 on Mixer. Mixer.com slash Kid22. Super Minus. And then Mind1 also have, here on Twitch. I have Twitter if you guys want to follow it. I'm going to get banned for posting this link in chat. Yep, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have to get you whitelisted for that. I'll fix that. Message later. deleted by a moderator. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> Mixer's our other streaming platform, but it's we're also on Mixer, so like, the team is on Twitch and Mixer as of now. Yep. Yes, yes. But uh, thank you all for joining us today. It's been a fantastic show. Any final words, guys? I said thanks for having me, guys. Stay strong. Oh, thank you for coming. Eat your peas. Get ready Watch Evangelion. <laughs> yeah, October. Keep being awesome. All right. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you all next time. I don't care if you buy a permit. Do you know how little I actually care if you have a permit? I think Boat has some. Yes, I do. Oh, I got some leaks for you. It's like simple, simple shit like that. No, simple shit like that. If you can't answer that, I need to bring in, I need to bring in, say, more original every week. That's a goal. Do you really actually get paid for that? Because you deserve money for that last one. I'm going to. I'm going to.